Holy castle, tree of beauties, tree of beauties, and divine. No grove on the earth can show us such a flower and leaf as thine. Precious nails and precious mould on which hung our dying Lord. Lofty tree bend down my branches to embrace my sacred burden. Relax, oh relax the tension of that all to rigid wood. Gently, gently bear the members of thy dying King and God. Tree which so thee was found worthy the world's victim to sustain our earth from the raging tempest. Ark that saved the world again, tree with sacred blood anointed. Of a lamb for sinners slain. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. My dear brothers and sisters, let us now confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves as we continue our Lenten journey in this third Sunday of the Lenten season, as we encounter our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the cleansing of the temple, let us take a moment to confess our sins to God, to seek to cleanse ourselves of ways in which we have been unfaithful, ways in which we have turned away from him. Please now make an examination of your conscience and confess your sins to God. Now awaken in our hearts a deep sense of sorrow for the sins we've committed. With confidence in the love and mercy of God, let us confess our sins as we recite together the first form of the Confidior. Almighty Father, you know my deepest secrets. I confess that I have, through my own fault, sinned against your holy laws. In my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done or failed to do, I sincerely regret my sins and I am truly sorry for offending you. I ask, Father, that in your mercy you pardon my sins. I promise to change my way of living, so that for a deeper holiness I may better serve you throughout the rest of my life. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. My brothers and sisters, this is an act of penance for our confession today. I ask that we spend some time in prayer, in contemplation, either in our own private prayer life or as we gather for devotions of 
seeking to bring the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ into a stronger position, a stronger action within our own lives. Let us seek those ways in our discipline, in our evangelism, reaching out one to another, who may bring the presence of Christ into every aspect of our lives. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Therefore you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength. The Lord your God shall you fear, him shall you serve, and by his name shall you swear. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Peace be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, help us to love your commandments and to follow your precepts, so that we may extend your kingdom on earth and do your will as it is done in heaven. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not carve idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above, or on the earth below, or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down before them, or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishment for their father's wickedness on the children of those who hate me, down to the third and fourth generation, but bestowing mercy down to the thousandth generation on the children of those who love me, and keep my commandments. You shall not take the Lord, the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work may be done then, either by you or your son or daughter, or your male or female slave or your beast, or by the alien who lives with you. In six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not cover your neighbor's house. You shall not cover your neighbor's wife, nor his fail, male or female slave, nor his ox or ant, or anything else that belongs to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response for our psalm today, Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear enlightening the eye. Lord, 
you have the words of everlasting life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are true, all of them just. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup, or honey from the cup. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs, and Greeks look for wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For what the law, weakened by flesh, was powerless to do, this God has done by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for the sake of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, so that the righteous decree of the law might be fulfilled in us, who live not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Cleanse my heart with the lips, Almighty God, and shall cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with the burning coal. In your mercy, cleanse me, that I worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen, and spilled the coins of the money changers, and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, Take these out of here, and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recall the words of scripture, Zeal for your house will consume me. At this the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for forty-six years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered what he had said. And they came to believe the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, my dear brothers and sisters, I want to once again share a short reflection on today's reading, today's gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in that scene we know as the cleansing of the temple, and also as a reflection upon the giving of God's law to the people, to Moses especially, in the book of Exodus. We see in today's gospel our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ coming to the temple at Jerusalem. He found in the temple area, Scripture tells us, those who sold sheep and oxen and doves, 
as well as the money changers seated there. It has come down to us by tradition that the zeal that Jesus had for God's temple, God's house, was motivated by those who had turned it into an opportunity for themselves. The sellers of oxen and sheep may have been taking advantage, at least in some ways, those who had traveled long distance, who could not bring animals to Jerusalem with them, and even those who were changing money, again, were in some ways maybe taking advantage of those who used the money of the empire as they needed to to live their daily lives. That money was somehow tainted because it had images upon it and even words which the Jews would have considered blasphemous. We know that the coins used in the Roman Empire had the, the head of Caesar upon them, and also an inscription that said that Caesar was the Son of God. And so the Jews would have backed away from using those coins, especially in something holy as purchasing an animal for religious sacrifice. So the money changers, and they may have been taking advantage in their rates of exchange, taking advantage because the travelers would have had no choice. This would have angered our Lord, and in taking those whip out of uh, cords, he would have drove them from the temple, stop making my father's house into a marketplace. Certainly, we must be on guard to turn the temple of God, even in our own day, into merely a marketplace. Now, certainly that sort of sacrifice is not occurring, but we also sometimes make a marketplace out of our religious experience by how we come to God. Lord, if you do this for me, then I'll be a, a better person. Lord, if only I can get what I want, be it a, a new bicycle for a young child, be it a new job for us at any age, be it, oh, if I can only have a bit more money in my life, a bit more success in my life, a bit more popularity in my life, then, Lord, I'll become a better person. Then, Lord, I'll be more devout in my attendance at worship. Then, Lord, I'll do good things for you. We turn our religious life into a transactional one, a marketplace. And we must be on guard with that same sort of zeal that we serve our Lord not out of any transactional agreement, but the fact that he is our Father, our Creator, and we love him. We serve him not out of what we can get, but serve because everything we have, we must return to him, give to him, not about what we can get, but about what we can give to the Lord, give to each other, give to the church in thanksgiving to the God who loves us. That's only really one aspect, though, of today's scripture. We also find our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, after he had driven them out of the, the temple, after he had said, stop making my father's house into a marketplace, the Jews come to him and say, what sign can you show us for doing this? Why have you done this? Jesus answered, destroy this temple, and I will raise, in three days I will raise it up. Now, of course, they didn't understand. This temple has taken 46 years to build, they said. 
it was magnificent by all accounts. If you're willing to raise it in three days, scripture tells us that they did not understand. He was speaking about the temple of his body and the reality we know as Christians 2,000 years later was that he was speaking about his death and resurrection. But it says something that the temple which had been always acknowledged as that place where we can interact with the presence of Almighty God, the place where God dwells among us, has in some senses been changed here. This temple will be destroyed and raised up in three days. The body of Christ becomes the temple, is for us the temple of the presence of God. In our lives. And because of that, it becomes that place where we encounter the commandments. In our first reading, we heard God deliver his commandments to the people of Israel, and they have come down to us today. I am the Lord your God. I have taken you out of slavery. You shall not have other gods before me. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Keep holy the Sabbath day. And then, of course, those commandments which regulate our relationship to one another. Honor father and mother. Do not kill. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not covet. Our relationship to God and each other in that presence of God that is those commandments is tied to that very presence of God that is among us in Jesus Christ our Lord. We encounter him today in Mass especially, in our devotional life, in our Lenten discipline of prayer and fasting and giving we encounter Jesus not just in a temple, but we encounter him in the person of Jesus Christ as he is found, yes, strongly in our parish churches, when he comes to us in Eucharist upon our altars, as he is found within the tabernacle of our parish churches, but it is extended further. It is extended further in our very lives of prayer, praise, work, and worship. My brothers and sisters, in this London journey this year, we have followed our Lord into the desert, a place of testing, a place where we recognize within ourselves the temptations that surround us as places where we are drawn away. We have followed our Lord and Savior to the mountaintop where he is revealed to us in that transfiguration then, and he continues to be revealed to us in so many ways. Today's Holy Gospel, we find ourselves in God's presence. Yes, in the temple, in our parish churches especially, and we so strongly desire to be returning to parish worship together as we are called and created to do. But so much more that we then take that strength and take that presence of Christ that we receive there and spread it to the world. Jesus desires to live strongly in each and every one of us, in our love for Almighty God, His Holy Church, and for each other, in our love for God's people as we continue to not be transactional in our 
worship, but rather give and not count the cost. Let us in this season of discipline and devotion discipline ourselves to see Jesus in our parish churches, in our communities of faith, in those who are around us who are in need of the love and care that we can offer because we are followers of Christ. We recognize in this season that he went to the cross for our salvation. Let us offer all as well that we may join our lives to his and that he may save us and bring us to the glory of resurrection. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. The commands of the Lord are clear, but his mercy is all-embracing. Let us pray to our Father, trusting in his wisdom and his love. Our response today, Lord, hear our prayer. That the church, in this season of Lent, may guide her members in the paths of holiness and devotion and bring them closer to God's love through prayer and the sacraments. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may all learn to turn away from sin with all of our hearts and remain always obedient to the will of God and his law. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who do not believe or those who have become lukewarm in their faith may hear the word of God and be brought to eternal salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That during this holy season of Lent, we may recognize the crucified Christ as the power of God and the wisdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that acknowledging Christ in the temple, we too may have great zeal for the house of the Lord, the place where we encounter our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer any affliction, physical, mental, or spiritual, that because of the generous love of Christ, peace and healing will also abound. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer, that the faithful departed may enjoy eternal life through the crucified and risen Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now, my brothers and sisters, for all those intentions that we each hold within our own hearts.
that in calling on the love of the Lord Jesus, our prayers will be answered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, in wisdom you have revealed to us your law. In mercy you have given us the grace to fulfill it. Hear our petitions for your people gathered in the name of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Owe nothing to anyone except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which of this given and human hands have made. May it become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this wine, and water, may we come share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness we have this wine to offer for the divine work of human hands. May it become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this sacrifice which we have prepared for the glory of your holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me of my sin. Receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which you make in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they, whose memory we honor on earth, intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from my hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, and for the benefit of his holy church. <clears throat> Almighty God, may these oblations purify us from our sins, that we may be found an acceptable people in your sight. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through our fasting, you increase divine life within us. You preserve us from sin and lead us into eternal life. Through our abstinence, you confirm us in goodness and curb our unbridled vices. As we commemorate this 40-day fast of your Son, may we, together with him, give you glory. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints in the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Of Son in the highest. Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, we ask you to bless and accept these gifts we offer you in sacrifice. We offer them for your holy Catholic Church, asking you to defend and guide it throughout the world. We offer them for me, your unworthy servant, all of my brother bishops, and for all bishops, priests, deacons, and other ministers who profess the true faith which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your people, Lord, especially our brothers and sisters for whom we now pray. Especially today we pray for all the priests and deacons of our Holy Church, all the members of our parishes, those who continue to be 
affected by this coronavirus. For the doctors, for the nurses, for all who help those who are in need, especially in these difficult times. Remember all of us who are present here, who truly believe and are devoted to you. We offer this sacrifice of praise to you, our living, eternal, and true God, for ourselves and all those we love, for the redemption of our souls with hope for our salvation. Together with the whole church, we honor the Virgin Mary, the mother of our Lord, Jesus Christ. We also honor the apostles and martyrs, as well as all those who have lived and died confessing your name. In remembering them, we desire to follow their example, and so gain your love and help. Father, accept this offering from your whole family. Grant us your peace in this life. Preserve us from spiritual damnation, and count us among your chosen people. Bless, accept, and approve this offering we now make to you, and let it be pleasing to you. Fill it with the power of your Holy Spirit, and let it become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. The day before he suffered and died, our Lord desired to make his love known to his disciples and all who would follow him. He therefore instituted these sacred mysteries, by which he joined himself with them, spiritually and bodily, in his whole being, and abides with us forever. At that solemn moment so sacred for all of humanity, Jesus took bread into his holy hands, and looking up to heaven to you, he is Almighty Father, he gave him thanks. He blessed the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. When supper had ended, he took the cup. In the same way, he gave you thanks, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Father, in celebration of the memory of Jesus Christ, your Son, we, your people, recall his passion, resurrection from the dead, and ascension into glory. From the many gifts you have given us, we offer you this pure, holy, and spotless offering, the holy bread of life, and the holy cup of eternal salvation. <coughs> Look favorably on these offerings and accept them, as you once accepted the gifts of your servant Abel, and the sacrifice of our father who made Abraham, and the bread and wine offered by your priest Melchizedek. In humility we ask, Father, that these offerings be carried by your angel to your high altar in heaven, so that we, who receive the sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar, may be filled with your grace and blessing. Lord, remember our brothers and sisters who have died and have gone before us marked with the sign of faith. May these and all who rest in Christ find happiness, life, and peace. And we, who trust in your love, also ask to be included in the fellowship of your holy apostles, martyrs, and saints who offer their lives to you. They were filled with your justice and mercy, and because they lived in accord with the teachings of Jesus, gained eternal joy. Count us among them, Father, not because of what we truly deserve, but because you are willing to forgive us. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, by whom you give us all these gifts, you fill them with life and goodness, you bless them and make them holy. Through him, with him, and in him, all in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. 
Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Cup of blessing which we bless. Is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break. Is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. In the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ, bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And my brothers and sisters, to those who are gathered together in these moments of prayer, I extend to each and every one of you Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My brothers and sisters, let us now pray together for the second communion prayer. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament through your loving kindness, may it become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. <coughs> I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. blood of Christ, bring me to everlasting life. Brothers and sisters, since we are unable to receive Holy Communion together in these moments of prayer, let us together make an act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, 
my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, we possess with a pure heart, now without taking his food. May the gift I have received may be filled and strengthened, now and forever. See that you do not reject the one who speaks. For if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much more in our case if we turn away from the one who warns from heaven? Let us pray. <coughs> Lord Jesus Christ, you have given us this holy season for repentance and atonement. May we, through the grace of the Eucharist, always respond to your voice. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Peace be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. On the cross, for the sins of man, our Lord was crucified. On the cross, Mid great pain and suffering, he bled and died. Lord, forgive us when we fail thee. Lord, forgive when we betray thee. Lord, forgive. From the cross, Filled with mercy, our dear Lord looked down on us. From the cross, torn with sorrow, yet he would forgive us. Lord, forgive us when we fail thee, Lord, forgive when we betray thee, Lord, forgive. With a cross, hope of all who would confess and come to him. With a cross, he would gather her all who would believe in him. Lord, forgive us when we fail thee. Lord, forgive when we betray thee. Lord, forgive. 